In today's video, we're going to take a look at how to use the FFT, or Fast Fourier Transform function, on this Tektronix TDS 2000 series scope. Uh, this topic has been requested many times over the last couple of years, and uh, I thought it was about time that I sat down here and did it. We'll start off by just doing a quick review of the basics of an FFT. Then we'll spend some time actually using the FFT on the TDS-2000 so you can see how to use it. And then if uh, for those interested, uh, we'll go a little bit more into some of the mathematical relationships between the scope settings and the FFT results. So let's get down to it. I did a video a while back, uh, video number 65, that goes into a lot more detail on the basics of an FFT. So I'll just review the highlights here. An FFT is a function that takes the time domain waveform that was captured by the scope and shows you the frequency domain content, plotting amplitude, usually in a logarithmic scale, versus frequency. So you can actually see what spectral components are in your signal. The record length that you capture in the scope, the duration of that in time, and the sample rate that's used to capture the waveform will affect the parameters or the results of the FFT result in terms of frequency resolution and the frequency range. Uh, the, those details are kind of summarized here and again there's more details in video number 65 which I'll link uh, down in the video description below. Uh, the short story of it is that the sample rate determines what the maximum frequency coverage will be in the FFT result. The maximum frequency is simply equal to one half of the sample rate. The sample rate can be computed with this result here. Now, just because your scope might say that it does one giga sample per second, that doesn't mean that the waveform that's in memory is sampled at one giga sample per second. The sample rate of the captured waveform is equal to the waveform memory that's being used divided by the record length in time. Uh, in many cases, when you're dealing with slower waveforms, the actual sample rate of the waveform is going to be much less than the max sample rate of the scope, so you have to be careful about that. So that's what determines the maximum frequency of the FFT. The frequency resolution of the FFT result is a function of the FFT length. The FFT length may not always be equal to the record length. Sometimes it will be shorter, and that's typically because an FFT algorithm requires that the number of samples that are used are basically a 2 to the n, like, a, like 1,024 or 2,048. It has to be one of those numbers where n is some integer. So, for example, this TDS-2000 uses a 2,500 point record length uh, so that the closest FFT length would be 2,048 points, and that's going to affect you know, the resolution that we can get out of the FFT. So for this example, I've got a 10 megahertz sine wave from a function generator going into the scope, about 2 volts peak to peak, which is about 700 millivolts RMS. Uh, in order to get good frequency resolution, we want that record length to be relatively long, so let's slow the sweep speed or time per division down or seconds per division control down to get more cycles up on the screen. And once we've got that, we'll go into the math menu and select FFT. And now we've got the FFT result. Let's take a look at all the elements of the display of the FFT result. So here's how to interpret the annotations on the screen. Uh, this tells you that we're doing an FFT on channel 1. 10 dB says I've got vertically 10 dB per division in terms of my amplitude scale. This 25 megahertz here is telling me how many megahertz per division I have on the frequency scale going horizontally. So it says I've got 25 megahertz of division, which means with 10 divisions I'm covering from DC to 250 megahertz. This 500 mega sample per second that's shown here shows me what sample rate is actually being used by the waveform on channel 1. Remember I said earlier that the actual sample rate of the waveform might be less than the indicated sample rate on the scope due to the record length that's being used. So in this case, we're using 500 mega sample per second, and therefore the frequency coverage is one half of that, or 250 megahertz. And right up here where it says position, 125 megahertz, that tells me what the position is at the center of the screen. 
So right at the center of the screen, that's 125 megahertz. Okay, the channel that we're going to use to perform the FFT uh, it can be selected with this button here. The window being used for the FFT function is selected here. Now again, the window is a function that's applied to the analog waveform to get rid of the discontinuity between the beginning of the waveform and the end of the waveform, which gets rid of spectral regrowth issues in the FFT result. There are different shape windows, and uh, there's more detail uh, in video, uh, video number 65. There are three windows available in the Tech uh, 2000 series. The Hanning window, uh, the flat top window, which is really best for magnitude accuracy, not so much for frequency accuracy. Rectangular means no window at all. In fact, you can see a little spectral regrowth that's going on here. It's really only good for pulsed waveforms, uh, where there's, you know there's no discontinuity between the beginning and the end of the time domain waveform. Uh, and the default is a Hanning window, which is, uh, gives you the best frequency resolution. And finally, this button down here is an FFT zoom. It's a way of changing the horizontal scale of the FFT result. With it at X1, we're going to see the entire result from DC out to, in this case, 250 megahertz. We also have the option of going to a times two. We can see that now we're at 12 and a half megahertz per division. We go to times 5, I'm now at 5 megahertz of division horizontally. And times 10, I'm at 2.5 megahertz of division. And then cycling back to times 1. When you use the FFT zoom, the expansion occurs around this little vertical arrow right here at the center. So we're always zooming in just to the center of the spectrum. So if we wanted to zoom in on, say, this component that's way over here, you might say, well, if I zoom in, I can use my horizontal position control and spin it all the way over, but that wastes a lot of time. There's actually an easier way to do that. So let's go back to a times one. What you do is first use the horizontal position control to put the signal of interest in the middle. So if I move the horizontal position control to put, say, that 10 megahertz signal right there where I want it. In fact, we can see from the position here, I'm now, I got 10 megahertz right here. Now when I zoom in, I'm going to leave that signal there and I can zoom right in around that. So now I've got a 10x zoom around my 10 megahertz signal. If you want to zoom in on, on another area, the easiest thing to do is to return this back to times one, hit the set to zero on the horizontal uh, function here, and that goes back and restores the full spectrum. Then you can move to a new position and then zoom in again. Of course, the frequency coverage here is uh, you know, DC to 250 megahertz at this particular set of settings, but maybe I didn't need 250 megahertz, and certainly that's even beyond the 100 megahertz bandwidth of the scope. So in order to, say, reduce that, we need to take the second per division or horizontal scale control and turn it to a larger value. And we can see as I turn this to a larger value, my sample rate just dropped to 250 mega sample per second, and now I'm at 12 and a half megahertz per division. If I do it again, now I'm at 100 mega sample per second at 5 megahertz of division. So I've got just a DC to 50 megahertz frequency range here. And what I've done by reducing that, uh, or making the seconds per division a larger value, in the time domain, I've basically put more and more samples. Uh, we can actually see if I expand it back out again. I put more and more cycles, if you will, on the screen. Okay, and by putting more cycles on the screen, we've increased our record length here, so the resulting uh, FFT okay, is going to cover a smaller frequency range, therefore have a higher frequency resolution within that range. So what you want to do is use the memory controls of your scope if it has them. This one does not. We've got a fixed 2.5 uh, K points of memory and the uh, time per division control or seconds per division to basically set up the frequency range that you want uh, the, you know, from DC out to the maximum frequency that you want to see. Now on the old TDS 2000 here, you know, it's a, a more than a decade old. It's not as sophisticated as some of the newer scopes that might have some uh, easier features for controlling this. But this is what you do on the TDS 2000. Now the vertical scale of the FFT is going to be uh, essentially dB volts RMS. Uh, so that uh, what we're going to see here, uh, that peak right there should be uh, dB volts RMS of the you know, 2 volt peak to peak signal that we're putting in. 
and that works out mathematically to be about minus 3 uh, dB volts RMS. And the way we can see that is by using cursors. So we hit the cursor button and tell we, we, the source that we want to put cursors on is on the math channel and we can set the type of cursors. If it's on magnitude, we can now use these two controls to control two cursors, cursor one and cursor two. So if I move cursor one right to the top of that peak, we'll see that's right at about minus 2.99, about minus 3 dB. And again, that's dB VRMS. The second cursor can also be used here. We can read the absolute value of the second cursor. and We also get a delta reading between them. The delta reading can be handy to take a note of how far down a spectral component is from, say, the main component. For example, if I change this 10 MHz sine wave to a 10 MHz square wave, I'm going to start adding odd harmonic components. So you can see I just added a component here. And if I use the second cursor, I can kind of take a look and see that that, oh, it's somewhere about uh, 10 dB or so down from the fundamental component. Okay, it might be a little bit less than that, but uh, we could play with it a little bit. But you get the idea of being able to measure both absolute and relative amplitude measurements using the cursors. So, of course, we can also measure frequency. So if we change the type from magnitude to frequency, now I've got these two cursors I can move around. So if I put the one on my main signal right here, okay, uh, we can see that that main cursor is at 10 megahertz. Let's move the second cursor over to the second peak, which should be at 30 megahertz, the... Uh, the third harmonic because I'm putting a square wave in here. We stick that right there. That's at 30 megahertz and we can see the delta between them is at 20. Here's an example if I wanted to zoom in on the spectrum around either of these two components I would first you know, adjust the horizontal position to put that component in the center and then go to the zoom function and zoom in on that one. If I want to zoom in on the other one I can go back to a, a one uh, zoom function and go back to you know, say this next component here and now zoom in on that and now I can see that component more clearly. Now the vertical control is actually going to control the vertical scaling. In this case it's 10 dB per division, maybe 20 dB per division, you know, 10 dB, 5 dB, etc. So it's just controlling the vertical scaling of the math result. You really want to, before starting the FFT, make sure that you've got the vertical scale set properly for the waveform you have going in. So you want, you know, a half to three quarters of the screen occupied by your signal before you go in and do the math. So that's all there really is to using the FFT on this old TDS 2000 series scope and the old TDS 1000 works the same way. Uh, you set up the signal on the vertical channel first, you know, make it occupy a half to three quarters of the screen or more to get good uh, amplitude, you know, uh, linearity. And then uh, use the horizontal uh, time base or scale to put a lot of uh, waveforms on or a lot of cycles on the screen. Not too many where you're going to alias, but enough that you're going to get good frequency resolution. And you can just start off by getting it set and then make some final adjustments when you go in and do the FFT. You can actually then use the hor you know, horizontal scale control to you know, play with it a little bit more and get the frequency range that you want and then you can use the zoom functions to kind of zoom in on the frequency components that you want. Okay, so for those who are interested, I'm going to do a one page on, uh, on some of the math to determine the fre actual frequency resolution that you get. And again, these notes I'll make available as a PDF that you can download with a link in the description of the video there uh, down below. Okay, so given this basis for uh, you know, how the FFT kind of works with the acquired waveform, Here's the specifics for the TDS you know, 1000 and 2000 series scopes. Again, the, these scopes have got a fixed waveform memory of 2.5K. Now for your scope, if you're using something different, you've got to plug in your value for the waveform memory. Uh, the record length, or the time duration of the record length, is equal to 10 divisions times the seconds per division control on the scope. We all kind of know that. So therefore the waveform sample rate that's going to be sent to the FFT is equal to the waveform memory, in this case 2.5 kilosamples, divided by the record length in time, okay, which is 10 times the seconds per division control. Now we have to remember on the TDS-2000 it uses a true FFT, which means I need a 2 to the n uh, number of samples. Uh, there are other algorithms that can be used and are used by other scopes that uh, aren't restricted by that, but the FFT is restricted by that 2 to the n. 
So the FFT in the TDS-2000 uses uh, 2,048 samples out of the 2,500. So therefore, the time duration of the FFT length okay, is going to be a little bit less than the record length. And it's just 2,048 divided by 2,500 times that 10 divisions, uh, 10 times the seconds per division. And that gives me now a frequency resolution in the FFT result of 1 over that, which is, you just invert this whole thing. And if you just you know, simplify this, you basically get a frequency resolution that's equal to 0 0.122 divided by the seconds per division. So it's a simple you know, one formula calculation. If you know what frequency resolution you want, you kind of already now know what time base you need to set up or what horizontal scale you need to set up for the, the waveform. And of course, the uh, maximum frequency rate or maximum frequency coverage of the FFT is equal to one half the sample rate. And that just works out, again, if you simplify the numbers here, uh, simplifies out to 125 divided by the seconds per division control. So we can see that both the, frequ the maximum frequency in the FFT and the frequency resolution of the FFT boil down to where you've got the horizontal position or the horizontal scale control set in terms of seconds per division. You know, buried in here is the fact that we just have a fixed waveform memory. So again, if you're applying this to a different scope that has a different amount of memory, you'll want to adjust these numbers. Right, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, little review of how to use the FFT function on a TDS 1000 or 2000 series scope with a little review on what uh, FFTs are. Uh, please uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, tell your friends, and uh, comments uh, and questions are always welcome. Thank you.